as you're steaming along I'm puff, puff, puffing along I'm peep, peep, peeping along Fly along the rails as your wheels go round I'm puff, puff, puffing along I'm peep, peep, puffing and puff, puff, puffing and steam around all day Percy's Ploy When Duck was sent to Edward's station, Diesel had to manage the yard alone. He was delighted his plan had worked, but his inexperience led to disorganized sidings and delayed trains. Percy came to keep the yard in order, but despite his best efforts, Diesel ignored his help. He's awful, Percy complained. He spends more time lurking amongst the trucks than shunting. I don't know what you three see in him. Duck is much better. Ha, snorted James. We've no patience for gossipy shunters. And that goes for you too, little Percy. Percy said no more, but decided it best to keep a watchful eye. The first train of the day is Henry's stopping service, followed shortly by Gordon's Express. One morning, Diesel put the coaches for these trains at the wrong platforms. When Henry arrived, he backed down onto the Express. By the time the station master worked out what happened and the signalman cleared a path to the correct coaches, Henry was delayed and none too pleased. Ten minutes behind schedule, he fumed, all due to your inadequacy. Revolutionary indeed. If my trains are late again, I'll give you revolutionary. Diesel had no reply. He sulked angrily, thinking how to pay Henry out. By the next morning, Diesel had a scheme. He purposefully put the coaches at the wrong platforms again. Percy, shunting nearby, was about to speak up when Henry arrived. What's this? demanded Henry. Don't tell me you've made the same mistake again. Why, certainly not. Your words taught me a valuable lesson, Diesel replied greasily. This is a change requested by the fat controller himself. The way I heard it, you pull the express much better. Gordon is only suited for that kipper of yours now. It's your turn today, and perhaps forever. Diesel scuttled away, leaving Henry full of pride. When Gordon arrived, he was surprised to be coupled to the local. Percy tried to tell them what he'd seen, but Gordon and Henry argued so bitterly that no one paid attention. In the end, Gordon left with a very late local and a nasty disposition. Henry, he complained to Percy, saying he pulls the express better than me. <laughs> On what railway is that true? My passengers have never once complained. And to suggest I'll be pulling the flying kipper, <laughs> it's disgraceful. Where did he get such an idea? From Diesel, retorted Percy. I tried to tell you earlier. You silly big engines, scolded Percy. Diesel made you act horrid to Duck, and now you're being horrid to each other. Sit around and moan if you'd like, but I've had enough. Percy stormed away, leaving Gordon with much to think about. Soon, Percy had devised a scheme of his own and was chatting with the trucks. You know, he began, I've heard something rather interesting. Tell us, tell us, begged the trucks. 
Diesel thinks you're easy to push around. He says he's got you following his every command. The trucks were furious. Someone should show him a thing or two, smiled Percy, and he scampered off. The trucks began plotting at once. Someone was going to be them. The next day, Diesel shunted the coaches for the first two trains and was readying James's slow goods. The trucks began giving him trouble. Come on, you wretched things, he growled. Move! As you wish, they laughed. As they crossed the junction points, it happened. The truck surged back and pushed Diesel off the rails. They sat blocking the line to the express. At that moment, Henry arrived. What on earth are you doing? You're in the way of my express. Sir Topham Hatt came to see what the matter was. Please be off with your local train, Henry. I'll attend to this mess. Henry was confused. I thought you wanted me on the express, sir. And where did you hear such a thing? By the time Henry finished, Diesel was looking rather pale. That will be all, Henry. Hurry along to your train. As for you, Sir Topham Hatt said, turning to Diesel, I shall deal with you later. Before long, Percy and the Cranes had Diesel back on the rails. He spent the rest of the day in the sheds. When the big engines returned, they hissed and glared at him. Silence fell when Sir Topham had arrived. My engines do not tell lies, he began sternly. I will not stand for deceitful behavior like this. Furthermore, you have shown you are incapable of handling the work in the yard. I am most disappointed. You will leave this railway at once. Without another word, Diesel squirmed away. As for you three, Sir Topham Hatt continued, I hope you've learned a valuable lesson about trust and loyalty. I don't expect my engines to believe unfounded claims. At least one engine saw sense. Although I don't approve of your methods, Percy, he trailed off. Percy blushed. S sir how did you- However, winked Sir Topham Hatt, so long as it remains an isolated incident, we shall say nothing more. Now, can I count on you to handle the shunting until Duck returns? Certainly, sir, peeped Percy, and he hurried off to tidy the yard. Sir Topham Hatt returned to his office just as the telephone rang. Yes? Come again? A barber shop? Gracious goodness me! I'll be there right away! But I'll say no more, or I shall spoil the next story.